What makes OCPD OCPD? <laughs> Greetings, Disorderland. The time has come for me to keep my word and to step it up with these videos, which means more content, less filler. Cool? Cool. Okay, so that means you have to stick around now to the end of the videos in order to get important updates, and I do have one for this video. And before we jump into it, one quick note, I did release two videos that almost none of you guys saw because the YouTube algorithm buried them, and that's because I dared speak about this thing going on in 2020 uh, that's kind of uh, impacting all of us. So if you haven't seen those videos, I'd love for you to check them out after this or later on, there was a lot of work that went into them, and I still think the information is very pertinent. As this channel has grown, more and more of you have reached out to me directly for help, which has been fantastic as I'm able to put together a fuller picture of what OCPD is and what it isn't. And one thing that's abundantly clear is that we are all very unique individuals with our own version of obsessive compulsive personality disorder. If you're in any type of support group, I'm probably not telling you something that you already don't know. It's also pretty obvious, but what's less obvious is the thread that binds us all together. Before we get into what that thread is, let's talk about why it might be important to know. Identifying similarities is something I've talked about on this channel before, and it's a common topic in forums and support groups. People diagnosed with OCPD are clamoring to know if other people with OCPD share their own particular set of symptoms. Is a symptom or trait of OCPD? Or I have OCPD and I do Do you do that too? Saying that it messes with your head to discover and accept that you have OCPD is an understatement and at this exact time of great discovery, you could not feel more confused. Your world is flipped upside down and it becomes necessary to find some footing. What we initially experience is uncertainty in regards to our behaviors. At this point, in order to stabilize ourselves, we need to start figuring out who we are. To put it simply, what parts of us are OCPD and what parts of us are us and is there a difference? Hence, why we get all the comparing and contrasting each other. And that's fine, that's normal, but when you set out to start putting a picture together and you aren't finding people that share your symptoms, you can begin to feel more alone more atypical. And I think a lot of this comes down to not knowing what it is you're looking for. You're out there looking to see whether struggling to decide if your Frankenberry cereal should be alphabetized by first name or last name is an OCPD trait, when what you really should be looking at are the underlying thoughts and causes of your own particular set of behavior. So why it's important to know what connects us is that misunderstanding this crucial piece of information can send us down the wrong path. And delay getting the help that we really need. And not to make matters worse, but I've even seen this sort of symptom seeking become a symptom unto itself. I'm sure for many of you watching, you're incredibly familiar with what OCPD is by definition. The DSM though, the book for which we source the definition, is an ever-evolving guide to mental disorders. So it's important to look back through past definitions up through to the latest to really get a clear picture of what OCPD is and what it isn't. The latest update to the DSM, the DSM-5, made some significant changes in order to more specifically define the parameters one would need to be, to be diagnosed. In this latest definition, there are seven criteria to be met. No matter which criteria you match, however, the one word that has to be included in order for the diagnosis to be made is rigid. Rigid is mentioned four times in the criteria, along with one mention of the word constricted, and both constricted and rigid are synonyms for the word tight. In this instance, the definition for tight would be strongly fixed or held as in strongly held belief. It's probably no coincidence though that difficult to cope with functions as an alternate definition for the word tight. To tie things back into the title of the video, what makes OCPD OCPD is rigidity. It's not any one specific belief or behavior. Instead, it's how rigid we are with the personality that we've developed, whether that's consciously, subconsciously, or due to our OCPD. By no means does being rigid indicate that you have OCPD, but you can't have OCPD without being rigid. Rigidity is the thread that binds us all together. When we're looking to see ourselves and others, it's this thread that we should be unraveling. But more importantly, when seeking help, it's this idea of rigidness that you should be trying to convey to your therapist. Navigating the early stages of therapy can be complicated and it's almost impossible to know how to prioritize all of the things that you need to tell the therapist. I know I've been there and you've been there and if you haven't been there yet, you will. 
We have a lifetime of issues that we want to resolve as quickly as possible, and you'd love for your therapist to know exactly what's wrong after the first visit. Sadly, that's not going to happen, obviously. They're not Miss Cleo. However, the better job we do communicating exactly what's wrong, the better job the therapist will be able to do in treating you. This doesn't mean that it's your responsibility to know how to navigate your own therapy not at all. On the other hand, knowing this going in will give you an advantage. Not all therapists are created equal, and this is something I'll definitely need to address in an upcoming video. Please do yourselves a favor and try your best to stop obsessing over each individual symptom, big or small. They don't need to be tackled on a one-by-one -one basis, and there's no need to spend your valuable time worrying about how to solve them and who else has them. Call it rigidity, stubbornness, and flexibility, uncompromising or determined. It's the one thing we all have in common. And if I'm gonna share a commonality with someone, I'm sure glad it's you. So that brings us to the end of today's topic. I do have some major, major announcements for future videos. I've been working on some really big OCPD related projects. That's why the videos have not been coming out, but that aside, for today's video, I want to let you guys know that I'm going to have a new segment coming out called Raw Reactions. What I'd like you guys to do is email me your questions directly at rawreactions at ocpd.org. I'll put the email somewhere on the screen here. Rawreactions at ocpd.org. Send me your questions, and I'm going to answer them randomly on a new segment at the end of each video. What this is going to do is it's going to give you an answer, or hopefully give you an answer to your question. Well, it'll definitely give you an answer to your question. Hopefully it'll be a good one, but it'll also give you some insight into like how an OCPD mind works. You'll see some of that stubbornness, rigidity, all the sort of stuff we talked about in today's video, because I'm not going to look at the questions ahead of time. And so, like I said, this is going to be off the cuff and hopefully it'll give people that don't have OCPD a little bit of insight. Hopefully it'll answer some of your questions. I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna be fun. I'm also planning on doing some giveaways to the people whose questions I, I randomly choose. Okay, so I think that wraps up today's video. I'm still Daryl. Thank you guys for sticking around. This is still my life in debris, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao.